Good evening and welcome back. Welcome back to session number two of The Path. We're going to start very shortly. Go in and get your notepad, your Bible and ink pen, and let's get ready to learn. So welcome back and good evening. I pray that all of you are well and that you are experiencing the and good evening. best of God for that. your life. Amen. I hope God is getting your best and that you are getting his. Amen. Somebody type, I am giving God my best and he is get, giving me his best. Go on and make that declaration now. I'm giving him my best, and he is giving me his best. Amen. All righty. So we're going to get started tonight. This is class number two of Wealth Creation, and it's so good to see so many of you here tonight. God bless you. All righty. We are in session number two of The Path that will run April 27th through July the 20th. Amen. Keep on typing those declarations. I'm giving God my best and he is giving me his best. Amen. Don't forget his he is with a capital letter. Amen. That's the former English teacher in me. But it's so good to have everyone back tonight as we prepare to get our finances in order. Amen. Order is a good thing in life, period but particularly when it comes to your financial situation. If you have registered properly for this class, then you are able to access the PowerPoints. Now listen, I wanna encourage you to make sure you've registered so that you can go in there, get these sessions, these PowerPoints and print them out. If you print it out with three slides on a page, you'll also have lines that you can keep notes on. And that's a good thing. So I hope that you are uh, doing so, amen, so you can really keep up. And even after the class is over, you'll be able to keep up with um, your, the changes that happen in your finances. All right, you know what time it is. Let's go on. I see many of you have already typed, shared. So go on and get those shares going. We want to reach 100 shares each week. The purpose of that is to get the lessons out there in social media because you never know who's watching and who needs what from the Lord. Amen. And so this is uh, social media evangelism. Let's take advantage of an opportunity to bless someone else with what we're learning. Wealth creation is about showing you how to do more with what you have so that you ultimately have more. This course will be taught by myself and a financial advisor. By the end of class, you'll be able to act, assess how healthy your money habits are and learn ways to make your money work for you. Amen, we work too hard for our money not to work for us. You will also walk away with a personalized budget to fit your current needs. This is week number two. Now you all know how quick these weeks go. 
We just had our first session for, of the year. Those 13 weeks went so quickly. And now here we are in week number two. We're going to talk tonight about money myths. Things that people believe about money, but they're not true. And money myths can really hurt your finances because some myths we've actually embraced. And because we've embraced those myths, we live our life according to that. But it's not healthy and it's not true. So we want to change from walking according to financial myths to really being informed financially. Amen. Ecclesiastes 10.19 gives us some wisdom concerning money. It says a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. I'm gonna just throw out some things right now and I want you to tell me what it takes to get that done. How do you pay your mortgage? Somebody write down in the, in the chat. How do you pay your mortgage with what? Go on, in the chat, I want you to answer that question. How do you pay your mortgage? What do you use to pay your mortgage? What do you use? Thank you, Pamela Selden said money. Diane Deaconess Diane Kearney said money. Marshall Warren from E-Church, North Carolina said money. What do you use when you go to the gas station? After you finish pumping, putting in your car, what you put in there, do they tell you, you know, drive on off, you speak in tongues, or drive on off, you a member of Set the Captives Free? What do you use? What do you use to purchase gas? What was the, what did you use this current uh, past week when you bought gas and groceries? What did you use? So as I can see in the chat, Robin Burston, Dignus Karen Chase, Barbara Bartley, Janelle John, or Janelle says she's sharing, but you guys said money. Absolutely right. In the world system, money answers all things. There's very little that you can do in the world system without money. Just like in the kingdom of God, there's very little you can do without faith. If you go to get anything from God, it's going to take faith. And in the world system, if you're going to get anything done, many of the things we do are going to cause call for finances. Amen. Nobody let us just walk into the O Center. It costs money. The very first step to building wealth is to spend less than you make. Okay. And that's something we have to teach people to do. It's a mindset that we have to get into to spend less than you make. Most people spend more than they make and then some, all right? So there are two things we're focused on in these next 13 weeks, debt reduction and creating and building wealth. Is everyone clear? Type clear if you're clear. Type clear. I'm not going to teach you how to become a millionaire. I'm not going to teach you how to play the lottery and win. I want everyone to be clear what this class is about. It's about debt reduction and creating and building wealth. Pam Seldon is trigger finger boy. She, her answer pops up so quick. All right, debt reduction and creating and building wealth. That's what we're working on. I want to see you happy with your financial situation to the point that you can take trips and do things that you've always wanted to do in life because you know how to save up and prepare for those times and you're prepared for your return home so that it doesn't become a burden on your family. That's so important. All righty. So here's what you can expect. And uh, if tonight is your first time here, just type first. If I don't get any firsts, then I don't have to review this. But if this is your first night here, just type first. Because I need to make sure everyone's clear about what they can expect about the class. You're going to immediately participate in a savings project, which we started already, where you can only buy grocery, groceries, and gas. 
And some of you saw me in church Sunday and let me know how difficult it is. I know if it's not difficult, it's not a challenge. Amen. I'm trying to get your attention and I'm trying to shift the way you deal with money and the way you handle money. So I know it's uncomfortable. It's supposed to be. But guess what? You can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. You got this. Somebody type, I got this. So we're going to either have you create a budget. If you already have one, we're going to help you improve it. You're going to learn strategies for debt reduction. Also understand, you're going to understand personal finance and begin to handle money more effectively. All right. I see the first is coming up. No problem. Hey, Dominique Sutton. Good to see you, honey. And so number five, you're going to learn ways to make your money grow. How many of you want your money to grow? Just type grow. Just type the word grow. Go on. Type the word grow. I want my money to grow. And guess what? It can grow without you working an extra job. Deacon Antonio and I are going to help you with this. All right, so here's the challenge. Those of you, this is your first night. You might want to take a seat before I go over this because it's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to challenge you, but guess what? Growth is always challenging, always. So for the next 13 weeks, you can only purchase the bare necessities, gas and groceries. For the next 13 weeks of this class, you are on a shopping fast. Yep, you heard me. You said, well, can I get my hair, my nails done? That's fine because that's part of your overall grooming and your health. But you can't buy nothing else but gas and groceries. Everything you were trying to do is going to have to wait. Now, the difference is if you are you have a young person graduating from high school and you're having a get together, those kind of things are normal. They're fine, but not much else because I'm trying to shift the way you handle finances. All right, let's look at these myths. Now for each myth, I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna ask you to respond whether they are true or false. You ready? Each myth we're gonna, we're gonna respond with true or false. Is everybody ready? Type ready if you're ready, because I'm gonna need you paying attention. And I'm going to need, I know need is my birthday month too. I know it's a challenge, but you're going to be better for it. Now on your birthday though, you can go ahead and enjoy yourself. Amen. But only the birthday, not the month. Okay, here we go. Of course, myth number one. I don't earn enough to save money. True or false? Is that a true statement or a false statement? Go ahead and write true or false. I don't earn enough to save money. True or false. Is that statement true or false? I don't earn enough to save money. Hey, Jenny Williams, I got a crochet sweater I got to show you. Number one, I don't earn enough to save money, true or false? No cheating. Don't look at somebody else's answer. And don't go with the crowd because the crowd's not always right. Number two. One day I will just hit the lottery. Is this a true or false statement? One day I will just hit the lottery. This one's, a tr this one's tricky, but one day I will just hit the lottery. Everything will be fine. True or false? Number three, I can always start to save money later. True or false? 
Is that is that a good uh, good disposition to have? I like that, Denise. She put a number two, so I know. Yeah, put a number in front of your um your answer. That's slick. Deacon Courtney did the same thing. Number three, I can always start to save money later. All right, let's get to those hundred shares. Number four, true or false, I work hard and I'm spending my money on what I want. Is that a healthy attitude towards finances? True or false? We're on number four. I work hard and I'm spending my money on what I want. Number five, is this a statement that should be true or false? I don't need insurance. Put a number five in front of your answer. I don't need insurance. I don't need insurance. Number six, I'm too young to save for retirement. True or false? Is that a great attitude for a young person? I'm too young to save for retirement. Number six, I'm too young to save for retirement. While you're answering, I just wanna say that uh, STCF, you are amazing. We have rolled right on through the pandemic. Like, like I mean, just it, you, you all have just been amazing. Hey, Connie Alexander, Donna Lambert, you all have been amazing. And then the last one, number seven, I can't afford a financial advisor. I can't afford a financial advisor. Is that a good attitude to have? Is, is that a true or a false? Should a person feel that way? Number seven, I can't afford a financial advisor. True or false? All righty, so we're going to do this early on because once I start teaching on the myths, by the way, let me go back. All of them were false except number four could be true or false. That's all right, Danita, we're glad you made it. Number four could be true or false. All the others were false. All right. How many of you got them all right? Put 100% in the chat. Give yourself 100%. Hey, Connie Alexander, Benita Thomas, Shelly Albert. Put a true, I mean, not sorry. Put 100% if you got them all right. Now, the reason number four could be true or false, if you live on a budget and you give yourself an allowance, you can spend your allowance on whatever you want. You can, but that's if you're living off of a budget and we'll talk about that. So every one of these were false except number four. Give yourself, if you got them all right, put that 100% all right. I see it, Barbara Bartley, Dominique Sutton, Deaconess Diane, Diane Crisco, all righty. Lionel Spears, 100%. Some of you, your name's not showing up, but even if I can't see it, congratulations. Robin Bowers, Rosalind Cromwell-Jones, Jerome Parker. It's weird because when I go back and watch, watch it on Facebook, I see names popping up that I don't see during class. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, to all of you, congratulations. 
So let's take a look. Before we get into the lesson, I want to go on and receive tonight's offering because I want to roll straight through these. So if you are a tither, if tonight's your night to tithe, go on and do that. I get paid on Wednesday. So Wednesday is my day to tithe. But throughout the week, like all those beautiful love gifts you all gave me for my birthday, I've already tithed off of that. Everything that comes into my life, 10% belongs to the Lord. All right. And if you are a visitor, please type visitor so we can appreciate you. And thank you for being with us. And uh, I would love for us to have the highest cash app donation. I say that every week, don't I? Every week. So go ahead and um, if you can do a $10 cash app to the church tonight, that would absolutely be a blessing. All right. And remember, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So y'all ready to learn something tonight? Type I'm ready to learn if you're ready. Go on and just type I'm ready to learn. Anyone ready to learn? Type I'm ready to learn. If you shared it, type shared. Because of course, each week we want to get to 100 shares. I want to see people financially free because when, when debt is riding your back, it can steal all your joy. It is no fun. So if you're ready to learn, just go in and type, I'm ready to learn. If you are a visitor, you are not a member of Set the Captives Free, you're still family. Type in the chat, I'm a visitor, because we would love to greet you properly and welcome you to our lessons, which are free every Wednesday on Facebook. Amen. All right, so let's look at these money myths tonight. Myth number one is I don't earn enough to save money. More than one in five working American adults, or 21%, don't set aside any of their annual income for short-term or long-term goals. So 21% of the population, they don't have any financial goals except when I get paid, I'm spending it all, okay? Which is really not wise and really you can't create wealth that way. That's according to a new survey from bankrate.com and it's a great website to visit if you wanna learn more. Hey, Veronica Smith, welcome. So it's a great, a great website to go on and learn from so that you can continue to increase financial literacy. So which uh, a, new, a survey from Bankrate asked a thousand people how much of their annual income they save for retirement, emergencies and other financial goals. And 21% of them, that's one in five persons said we don't, we don't save anything. Now, unfortunately, because of this, that's why you see things like GoFundMe. I think it's, uh, it's awful. This is my personal opinion. I think it's awful when you have to go online and beg people for money to, to send your loved one away properly. I just think it's awful. Everybody should have life insurance. And we'll talk about that later in the class. But many people feel that they have to earn a certain amount to save. You're welcome, Veronica. Good to have you. They feel like they have to earn enough to save. Well, guess what? A lot of people think, well, when I get a lot of money, I'll save. But that, that, that day may never come. And so rich people don't necessarily need to save. They have money. It's people who are working paycheck to paycheck or who have limited resources that need to make sure they put some of it away. Because if a day comes where you, you're in need, you don't wanna to have to go in debt to try to meet the need that you currently have. I remember one time I was working uh, at a company and I got, I got laid off and I already had enough money in my account to cover my expenses. When I taught school, you know what I would do every year? Before June came, I would pay my July and August bills so that I could really just go ahead and enjoy the summer because when I taught school, we got paid 10, uh, 10 months out the year 
not 12. So I saved money and, and took care of my summer bills before school was even out. And that was such a relief. And I could keep my peace of mind because my car, I would pay two car payments. I would pay other stuff and get everything up to date. So you got to have some long-term and short-term financial goals, okay? You have to, like Paula said, put something aside. You have to. Now, look at this. When people were asked the biggest reason they weren't saving money, they said because of their expenses. Well, I already told you that most people spend more than they make. When you get paid, your whole paycheck should not go to bills. Your whole paycheck shouldn't go to bills. If your whole check is going to bills, you're going to be one unhappy person. 16% of people said they just haven't gotten around to it. We know about that. Now, the word around is not here, but I stuck it in. Haven't gotten around to it. That's an excuse we hear in life, period. Job isn't good enough. Well, it doesn't matter where you work. Money is money. Even if it's a job you don't like and you're earning money there, you still need to put money away. Some people said they haven't started saving because they're in debt. And this is what we want to eliminate. Debt shouldn't control you. You should control your debt. I only have two credit cards. And it's funny, every time I, I love TJ Maxx, every time I'm in there, they say, oh, would you like to open a TJ Maxx card today? You'll earn this. And I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Because every time you open a new credit card, it affects your credit score. And they're like, but you can get this percentage off your, your sale today. And I'd say to them, yeah, but my credit score can also uh, drop. It took me years to get my credit score as high as it is. I'm not trying to open a TJ Maxx or anybody else card, Marshalls, whoever. I'm not trying to open a credit card there. So I have two credit cards that I use, just two. And guess what? I use them when I want to not because I have to. Hear the difference. I use them when I want to. When I don't feel like paying cash, I use them, but I immediately have a plan to pay it off. Make sense? And one thing that's so good about American Express, American Express will reward you. If you're great with your finances, there are a whole lot of ways that good credit cards like American Express reward you. And then the last group, 8%, just said they don't need to save more. These are the folks that you see a GoFundMe for when something happens to them because they're too selfish to have their stuff straight and their family ends up getting impacted. One day I will just hit the lottery, Lord Jesus. So many people have this attitude right here. So many, okay? So many people think, oh, you know, one day I'm just going to, I'm going to hit it rich some kind of way. Those get rich quick schemes do not work. What works is hard work and prayer because the Lord promised Joshua that he would, wherever the sole of his foot would tread, he would give that to him. What does that mean? God also said he will bless the work of our hands. Somebody type the work of our hands because there are a lot of people with, with financial fantasies. They don't want to work, don't want to put in forth any effort, but they want to make a lot of money. Well, you have to work. If you're going to make money, you have to work right? So the odds of winning the mega millions jackpot are one in 302.5 million. You hear that? One out of 302.5 million, according to the lottery game, while Powerball's odds are one in 292.2 million for the top prize. So even though people walk around saying, yeah, I'm just going to speak positive affirmations, that's not the same as speaking faith, though. You can speak an affirmation and not be true. And so there are people that walk around promising themselves that one day they're going to hit the lottery. 
And the Bible says not to trust in uncertain riches. That's what gambling is. That's what playing the lottery is. Here's 1 Timothy 6, 1. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now, let me pause here for a minute. A lot of people like to play the lottery and do other things to try to make money instead of being a faithful tither, okay? When you just play with your money, the odds are one in 302 million that you're gonna make out all right. But when you are a tither, when you give 10% of what you owe, 10% of what you earn rather back to the Lord who gave it, God promises to bless you. And not only is it always money, God will put favor on your life that will blow you away. Whenever I ordain people or pray for people, I pray that the unusual favor that's on my life would, be, would fall on theirs because I have stupid favor on me. I end up in situations that make me go, what in the world? How in the world? Just stupid favor. Well, I shouldn't call it stupid. I apologize, Father. No, it's not stupid favor. Favor It's divine favor. And so when you tithe and give your 10% to the Lord and take care of his house, he will blow you away with what he'll do with yours. So playing the lottery is not the answer because all you're doing is fattening the pot for those that win. And if you really pay attention to who wins the lottery, I've not seen a person yet in the heart of the inner city that's really poor win the lottery. No, ma'am. They, they, people who win the lottery live out in the outskirts, in the beautiful areas, in the beautiful places. You don't see us winning the lottery, not like that. And so you got to pay attention. All these people are putting their money in the lottery and it's going out to the, where the beautiful people live. Oh, I'm telling the truth. Are you ready for it? Okay, here's another. Now, this, this stems from procrastination, unfortunately. I can always start to save money later. That's an attitude that stems from procrastination. Okay, procrastination is related to unhealthy personal financial behaviors, such as postponing retirement savings, last minute shopping, and not paying bills on time. Listen, folks, bills need to be paid on time. They need to be paid on time. People, they, they, companies make a lot of money off of late fees. And they make a lot of money off of people who are irresponsible. Okay? make a lot of money off people who are irresponsible. So those late fees, they're there for a reason. They really are there to discourage um, paying late. But for the people who pay late, oh, they, they make money off of you. And if you're only paying the amount due, let me stop, I'm going into a future lesson, but if you're only paying the amount due every month, they are making a whole lot of money off of you. Studies suggest that 15 to 20% in the general population chronically procrastinate. That means to put off intentionally and habitually. So procrastination, hear me, is of the devil because a procrastinator, listen, listen to this revelation, a procrastinator is a person who knows what's right to do, but just not going to do it and definitely not going to do it right now. Whew. I would pray more, but I'm not going to do it. No, you need to, but I'm not going to do it. I would save more, but I'm not going to do it. See, it's not procrastination if you don't know better. But when you know better and you refuse to do it, habitually refuse and intentionally refuse, that's procrastination. 
How many of you know that you should be tithing, but you're not doing it? How many of you know that you should be praying more, but you're not doing it? How many of you know you should be exercising? Ow, I just hit my foot because I don't exercise as much as I need to. So I can always start to save money later is an attitude of procrastination. And listen, you'll wake up one day and be close to the age to retire and say, I meant to start saving. I really meant to, but it'll be staring you right in the face. I work hard and I'm spending my money on what I want. So now this attitude is not bad if you are living off of a budget. For example, when I get paid, I have my, I have my responsibilities covered and then I have a set amount that I allow myself to have. And we'll talk about this when we do the budgeting. I give myself a certain amount to enjoy each month. So once I've met my responsibilities, I've tithed, I've invested, um, I've put savings away, I've taken care of my responsibilities, what's left is for me to, that's for me to enjoy. And I can spend it on anything I want. But the problem is people who have that spend it on what I want attitude and don't handle their responsibilities first and have the nerve to spend the 10%, which is God's money. Now we have a problem. So with most people who just feel like they just can't, I just can't help it. I just got to get what I want and get it now. You are struggling from what you're struggling with is the ability to delay gratification. Okay. Delay gratification is uh, it's the act of resisting an impulse to take an immediately available reward in the hope of obtaining a more valued reward in the future. So people who can't or won't rather delay gratification, they refuse to make the sacrifices necessary to do better later. Okay, somebody type, I need to delay gratification. Come on, let's confess it together. If we all say it, then the folks who are really struggling with it will feel encouraged. But we need to delay gratification. We need to know that we can't get everything we want right away, that sometimes you have to sacrifice and sometimes you're going to struggle a little bit. You can't have it all right now. Okay. Some people want a great big gorgeous car. Well, why would you drive a great big gorgeous car up to an apartment? Get your house first. I would rather drive a raggedy car up to a house than a bad car up to an apartment. Think about it. And so we have to pr prioritize what makes sense to do first. The first thing it makes sense to do is to own property. Get yourself a house. Start somewhere. Own property. Then you can stretch out and do some of the other things you want to do. But don't do that while you're paying an apartment and paying somebody or, or paying, you know, renting a house and helping somebody else pay a mortgage on a house. Dominique said, I need help, Pastor. No problem. This 13 weeks is going to bless you, I promise. So delaying gratification now, delaying gratification is not the American way. I'll tell you that now. It is not because we have credit cards and all kinds of things we can do to get stuff. So we're not good at delaying gratification because we can always find a way to get what we want. There's layaway. There's a way lay. There's credit cards. Boot, you know, there's programs, so many things to fill you up with stuff. And then you're in debt. And I don't care how much you love the Lord. When you in debt, it'll wipe that smile right off your face. It'll wipe it right off your face. It'll take your joy. Listen, you be in praise and worship, trying to worship and be just as distracted because you know you got all them bills on you and you know them people going to be calling your house and it's going to be a headache. 
So we must develop the habit of delaying gratification. You don't need it all right now. Here's myth number five. I don't need insurance. Without life insurance, you could face a financial calamity that greatly expands your existing debt burden. If you have outstanding debts, including student loans at the time of your death, but no life insurance, your family may end up being held liable to pay off those debts. And that's just not even fair. It's not even fair. I have so much life insurance. I'm telling you, my family at my funeral, they're going to cry a little bit, but they're going to be wanting to kiss my coffin because I'm gonna leave them straight. I'm not gonna leave them in a whole bunch of debt. The church won't be in debt. My family won't be in debt, amen. You don't wanna leave here and leave your responsibility on somebody else. And what's worse are parents who leave that on their children. Somebody type of three if I'm telling the truth, amen. Now you wanna, I'm gonna go back to owning a house just for a minute. Because one of the things that we um, don't always do when you own a home, especially if you have owned it for a while, you can go and um, refinance and claim some of that money and, and, and create wealth. You refinance, amen, and you create wealth. And so you always want to own property. You want to own property. Start somewhere. It may not be that great big house you were dreaming of. It could be a just little teeny little whatever. Start somewhere. Become an owner. Because think about it. In the Old Testament, what were most of the battles over? Land. Ownership. So life insurance is important. You definitely need life insurance. And there are free classes. Do you hear me? There are free classes. You can go on YouTube and Google life insurance. You, there, there's free, of, let me tell you something. I live on YouTube. I live on YouTube. Somebody blessed me recently um, with an Apple watch. I had to go on YouTube to learn how to work the thing. So there are so many videos on YouTube that teach on so many different subjects. So go on YouTube and start Googling insurance. Google these things because there's so, there's so much great information there that you don't even have to pay for, but it will help you in becoming financially stable. Myth number six, and I wish I had learned this when I was in my 20s, but this is another myth that's out there financially that's causing people problems. And I'm sharing on these myths ahead of time before we go into the more, uh, not more important, but the meatier stuff of this wealth creation class. I wanna make sure these myths are kicked over so you're not still operating out of those mindsets. I'm too young to save for retirement, Lord Jesus. Now listen, when you look at the average lifespan, you can break it out into, into segments of 30. One to 30 are your learning years. 30 to 60 are most people's earning years, okay? And then 60 and above are your returning years. So you've got approximately from 30 to 60 years of age, you've got approximately 30 years. And if you start at 20, 40 years, to start saving. Imagine if you put away $2,000 each year for 30 years. Can you imagine how much that would come? How much is that? Somebody, I know I have somebody on here that's a human calculator. That's what I call my husband, the human calculator. So if you save $2,000 a year, I'll do it real quick for 30 years. That's, you would retire with $60,000 cash sitting in your account to do whatever you want. But now watch this though. Thank you, Marie Hare. Yep, it 60,000 invested will grow. So if you're investing 60,000, guess what? When you retire 
it's not going to be 60,000. It'll literally, in some cases, have doubled. You'll end up with around 140,000 in your account for you to do whatever you want to do. Now, imagine retiring at 60 with $140,000, your house paid for, the kids gone. You Now you get to travel, do the things you desire to do. And that's money, you just put it away. And when you put money away, it's not a way for you to grab it when you feel like it, okay? Me either, Robin. Me either. No one talked to me about investing money early. I learned maybe maybe 15 years ago is when I started. Yep. Because in our culture as African-Americans, the, there's a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad you need to read by Robert Kiyosaki. And it talks about the things that rich people teach their kids that poor people don't with regard to money. And in church is even worse because sometimes for whatever reason in church, we feel like money is a no-no to even talk about. The devil is a liar. There are more scriptures on money than salvation. You do the research. I promise you it's true. And so money is important because we, the Bible says, if you're not faithful in the unrighteous mammon, talking about money, how can anyone commit to you to true riches? Okay, so it is important. Money is important. So according to a new research, excuse me, from Charles Schwab, this is where I had my first stock with Charles Schwab. I invested uh, 4,000 with Charles Schwab and it grew to 16,000. I did anyone hear what I just said. So it quadrupled. All right, so According to new research from Charles Schwab, which surveyed 2,000 young Americans aged 16 to 25, a resounding 76% think they'll have a better financial future than their parents, and they expect to retire on average at the age 60. Now, we know this is not going to happen. This is what they think. But the sooner you begin saving, I think I saw Deaconess Diane write this a minute ago, the sooner you begin saving for retirement, the better. When you start early, you can afford to put away less money per month since compound interest is on your side. And Deacon Antonio, would um, he's going to touch on that when he teaches about compound interest and everything. But when you put money away, that money grows. It's not just sitting there. Now, when you have a savings account in the bank, the bank is not going to do, the bank is not going to give you the kind of interest that an investment would. I was looking the other day at something uh, in my bank account and I said, and that, and you know, it made me move my money over to the investment account because they're not going to give you very much. They're really not going to give you very much. So you want to absolutely, this is why it's good to get a financial advisor or someone who can help you because you want to start investing early enough and they can show you where the best places are to put your money. So imagine a person who starts saving at age 20 and age around age 60, they retire. That's 40 years of savings. You know where most people could start their savings account? With their income tax check. Your income tax check that you get is something extra. It's, it's additional. It's not your, your every, um, every two week paycheck or monthly paycheck or what have you. And so that is a great place to start your savings. Most people can't wait for their uh, tax check to come so they can spend it up. What about, what about saving a portion of that? Do you, let me ask a couple of questions right here. How many of you, and you can just type yes or no, and if you're not comfortable, you don't have to answer at all. But how many of you have a set amount that you save every month? Just put yes or no, if you would like to. You don't have to share if you don't want to. How many of you have a set amount? 
Dominique, I have someone for you. Great question. How many of you save the same amount each month? Yes or no? And again, you don't have to answer if you're not comfortable, it's fine. But how many of you save the same amount each month? Now, if you are a person who's saving the same amount each month, that means you have a savings goal. Because usually when someone's saving the same amount each month, they're working toward a specific goal. So that's good. I see all those yeses coming up. I want to encourage you, those of you who don't, why don't you start tonight? Sit down and decide. No problem, Tish. Sit down tonight and thank you for your honesty, Tish and Deaconess Dana. Sit down tonight and decide how much of your money are you willing to sacrifice each month to go into a savings account? I currently, now I couldn't do this years ago, but I currently save 50% of my, my um, salary. So what I take in every month, I now save 50% of it. I had to, I, I love the nose. I love your honesty. We're going to help you, especially when we get to budgeting. So 50, I taught myself how to live off of half my salary every month every month. And guess what? Sometimes I do want that money, but then I remember that I have to delay gratification. So I want you to sit down tonight and decide how much could would you be willing to put away? It's not a, hey, Haroon from Virginia. Hey, love. It's not a matter of how much can I afford to put away? How much are you willing to sacrifice now to enjoy later? So what's the sacrifice? If I wanted to, I could every month, I could use that money I'm putting away. But the problem would be, I would later regret that I didn't delay gratification. So you're never too young to save for retirement, all right? So you've got your next assignment. You know you can only buy gas and groceries for the next 11 weeks, but also... Sit down and decide how much you want to save each month. Now, once you decide that, put it somewhere where you can't get it and won't pull it back out. Sometime that, and, and we'll talk about that. Don't give it to a person now. Or give it to somebody to save for you. You go back and they be like, um, we need to talk. No, you get ready to get hurt. So don't do that. So, but find, find a bank not close to you that you can't get to, or don't get a debit card for that account. Don't make it easy to get to it because you want to put it away so it can grow and so you can use it. And myth number seven, I can't afford a financial advisor. Can I say to you, you can't afford not to have one because money is a, a very complex subject there's so many ways to earn it and, and grow it. And if you're not familiar with those things, uh, I, when, when COVID hit, I remember saying, wow, Amazon is really cleaning up right now because people aren't leaving the house. And uh, so I said to my fan, financial advisor, I said, I wish I had stock in Amazon. And guess what he said to me? He said, you do. And I was like, yes. I didn't know because I trust my financial advisor. In fact, he's going to be teaching next Wednesday. Get ready for him because he's a bad dude. I trust him so much and, have, and know that I can trust him that I don't watch every little thing he does. Now, I do keep up with, you know, we do have conversations. I know what I'm working with and all of that. But when he told me I had stock in Amazon, I just wanted to cry. That's a great financial planner because he puts my money in different places. And I don't always ask him all the details because I trust him. He's a, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. He's never ripped me off. I've never had any problems out of him. So when I found that I had stock in Amazon, I really got excited because I, I know my money is growing. 
So here are reasons why you can't afford not to have a financial advisor. Number one, you don't know how to plan your retirement like they do. A financial planner is great at helping you plan for retirement. They'll help you figure out what your financial goal is, what it is you want, how much you expect to retire with. Um, he sat down, he sits down with me once a year and goes over my whole portfolio and says, this is where this is, this is where that is, this is what you can look to, you know, expand, et cetera. And so that's very important because they are professionals at preparing people for retirement. You also want to have a financial planner so you can prepare for the unexpected. Things happen in life. Life happens. Type, type of one, if you know life happens. Life happens. And so if you have nothing on the side and nothing prepared for emergency, you're going to end up in debt because you got it. For instance, your roof goes up. Well, you got to fix it unless you want water leaking into the house. And if there's no money set aside for that, now we're getting ready to go into debt because we're going to have to get a loan. We're going to have to charge it. We're going to have to use money we weren't prepared to use. Providing emotional guardrails. They will help you. I remember when, when COVID hit and I was like, oh my God, should I take all my stock out with it? Should I take all my money out of the bank? I mean, I freaked out. And my financial advisor said, nope. He said, the market went down some, but it's going to come back up. And sure enough, I kept watching my portfolio. I took a hit. I did. I lost thousands of dollars during COVID. But guess what? Got it all back. But that's not something I would have known. My financial advisor knew. He said, don't be emotional. Don't make emotional decisions. Leave it, leave it in there because the market's going to go back up. Avoid, they also help you avoid unnecessary taxes. A good financial planner will show you that, you know, there are a lot of things you can claim on your taxes that people don't know. And they're not, the IRS is not going to tell you. For instance, I didn't know that getting back when I wore robes all the time, I didn't know that that was tax deductible when I did my taxes. I had no clue. I didn't know home improvements were tax deductible. This past year, we had some work done out back and I, I, we were able to claim all that on our taxes and got a wonderful tax return. But guess what? We, didn't, we weren't aware of that. These are things that a good financial planner will help you with promoting financial and physical wellness, because when your money ain't right, it can it can wreck you. It really can. And it doesn't mean you don't have faith in God, but it'll mess up how you function. They also help you create a long term financial strategy strategy. I'm sorry. That's customized to you your finances and what it is you're trying to do. If this is helping you just type a three real quick. If this any of this is helping you just type a three. And then they also help you use data-driven decision-making. Not, I got a feeling this is going to work out. No, they show you re in real time. He gives me a, a sheet with charts and graphs and shows me what my money is doing. And if I add this, this will happen. If I take from here, that'll happen. And, and he's not guessing. These are proven strategies. And so I'm excited that next week, uh, Deacon Antonio Marshall will be with us. He's going to teach. Uh, he's been handling my money for years. And I'm telling you what, he's doing a tremendous job with it. And I thank God for him. So these are the myths we kicked over tonight. I don't earn enough to save money. Yes, you do. One day I'll just hit the lottery and probably not. I can always start to save money later. You can, but you're going to be broker. I work hard and I'm spending my money on what I want. We'll come back to that one because that's true and false. I don't need insurance. Oh, yes, you do. I'm too young to save for retirement. You absolutely are not. And I can't afford a financial advisor. You can't afford not to have one. Their fees are not, not high. 
and you earn so much more than you, you think. All right, so I want you to go to your Facebook page tonight. Um, just write down now what you're gonna write. What was your takeaway for tonight? What did you learn? What, what touched you? What made you think? What decision did you make as a result of tonight's class? And you're gonna use these three hashtags, wealth creation, debt reduction, STCF path. How many of you are gonna do this? Just type a four. If you're gonna actually do this on your Facebook page, type a four or your Instagram page or Twitter, wherever you wanna put it, amen? Wealth creation. Thank you, I thank you, Quay. That's so encouraging. I'm really trying because I really want to see people set free in these finances because I'm telling you, having your money messed up can steal all your joy. Wealth creation, debt reduction, STCF path. Some of you need to right now today refinance and take some of that equity in your house and fund that vacation you've always wanted or fund that, that investment portfolio you want to get started. I'll tell you one great place this is just my experience. Rocket Mortgage is of God. I'll just, I'll just say that. Rocket Mortgage is of God. I mean, they will help you. They, they're amazing. So go on, take a picture of this slide right here so that you can get those three hashtags and uh, tag me in if you want. I'd love to see what your takeaways were tonight. I know you were blessed. I was blessed sharing with you. And, and guess what? I've got a whole lot more to share with you. I did this course with some pastors and man, they, they said, I've never been able to pay myself, but I put them all on a budget and they're rolling now. They are rolling. All right, did we get our hundred shares? How many shares are we at? How many shares, Danielle? We're gonna get out, we're gonna get our money straight. We're gonna enjoy life. How many shares are we at? Anyone see? Can anyone tell? Do we get our 100 shares tonight? All righty. Father, I thank you for your precious people. I pray that you would bless them, strengthen them, that they would only buy gas and groceries and they would stick in here and do this shopping fast with me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Well, I won't. I'll see you soon. God bless you.